gosh. <laughs> Have you ever... Well, before I even get started, what's amazing to me is that I get a chance to sit here on a porch looking at the wind blowing, rain. I mean, we're in middle California, Sacramento to be exact, and we haven't had rain so long that, man, it's like, cool, we finally got some rain. <clears throat> and I'm enjoying it. <laughs> Getting a chance to get my work done, you know, and come out on the porch and watch the wind blow and trees swaying and branches blowing. And just the refreshing feeling that comes when you get that first rain, you know, like when it first hits the pavement and you smell the pavement getting wet or sidewalks or... Sometimes, you know, if you live out in the country, you know, you have some plants that just bloom in the first mists or even the dew in the morning. But for me, it's like, man, something about living in the city when you can just smell that pavement get wet. <laughs> okay, maybe that's not for everybody. But, you know, it's kind of something that you grow up with, you know, and you kind of like it. And uh, I know I used to think that that burning in my lungs when I was a kid was normal. And then I discovered because I grew up in LA, it was smog. <laughs> well, gradually, they managed to get rid of that. But today in the devotionals, I was reading and I was thinking about this, especially with what God has done in my life recently. It's like, have you ever been tickled so bad that you were just laying there and you just, you, you couldn't take anymore. You were tickled so much that you were crying almost, you know, and you were just laughing so hard and you just, it was too much. It was just overwhelming you. You were just, you couldn't take it. You were just, wow. And you had to stop, you know, and the person wouldn't stop. They just kept tickling you. That's the way I feel today. <laughs> Man, I am just tickled pink. <laughs> okay, maybe not pink. Hmm. But, for me, when we moved into this house, I, I kind of knew that God had something special in store because there was so much room and I saw the floor plans and I just knew that it would be beautiful for plants and it would just give me a chance to spread out and just almost like you want to say lift your wings and fly, you know, but for me it was just kind of like, yeah, a chance to just share and record and study and be open to what God might do or what God would say or how God wants to lead the ministry in video. And I was excited because I knew that, you know, I'd been so many places with Jesus that I had lots to share that I wanted to, but just never really had the chance where I was at. And it seemed like every time that I got kind of like thrilled about sharing Jesus, somebody was upset. And I was like, wow, you know, it's kind of, they're Christians and why would they be upset? But it's always one thing after another, you know, until finally God said move. But when we did, it was like we walked in here and it was like, wow, our eyes were big as saucers. Because we walked out on the porch and we thought, man, you could live on this porch. <laughs> it really is big. I know you can't see it. But it just goes way down there and way back there. But the house itself, to her, the apartment is an upstairs apartment but it's like a house I mean it's huge and we just love it it's just perfect for us you know and we'll probably be here years <laughs> should the Lord carry but when God blesses you have you ever felt like that that it was just oh no Lord that's that, too much too much you gotta, you gotta back off come on Lord that, that's just too good too good that's the way I feel right now it's just wow you know I've been walking around in a state of peace for Gosh, I don't know. Every time I come on the property, it's like calm, quiet, peaceful. It's nice. It's been a long time since I've had that chance because I used to be sensitive. You know, I used to go into an area or a place or city, you know, and you could kind of like sense in the environment that there was something wrong or something bad had happened there, that maybe there was some kind of spiritual thing going on. And you just knew it, you know. And Man, I used to really get oppressed that way. It used to bug me a lot. And God had to really, you know, kind of take me, you know, to a better place. 
so that I didn't react so much because I, I was beginning to think I was schizophrenic or something, you know. But as it turned out, you know, I began to understand that I was just kind of like a spiritual thing. It wasn't that big a deal, you know. But <clears throat> I was kind of able to sense things that were there, and it was kind of neat. Was that in every place that God has taken me, you know, I've learned a lot about how He uses things in your life, and you keep going kind of like uphill. You know, you kind of like bring things together, and your experiences come together, and they, they almost like make a, what used to be called a gestalt, uh, coming together of all the pieces to make a perfect picture. And it's like, in this apartment, wow, everything that I own, all my pieces fit. It's like, we keep putting up things in different places, and they just go there perfectly. I mean, it's just amazing. The plants all fit. You know, everything is just wonderful. I mean, we haven't even moved in yet. We just moved our junk over. You know, we're still planning on this Saturday coming up that some Christian friends of ours are going to come over and help us. You know, they're going to actually. The Lord told me not to move some real heavy lifting things that I I used to just manhandle myself because. Almost all my life, as much as maybe you've had, you know, Christian friends show up and do things, I've always been the Christian friend that did it for everyone else. <laughs> uh, whenever it came to me, you know, as much as there's that analogy of where Jesus says, you know, in as much as you've done it to least my brethren, you've done it to me, that when I was thirsty, you fed me, when I was hungry, you came to me, and all that. Uh, not so much with me. <laughs> People didn't really do that too often. I find myself kind of like in hospitals and you know odd places that you know I didn't get visited much. You know? <laughs> but I never held it against anyone. It was just me and the Lord. And it's kind of like I'm so thrilled now to be able to turn around and do that for others or to inspire others to do that because I know what it's like to be on both ends. So I rejoice in all those experiences that God has brought me through and brought me to, you know, so that I can relate them to you, you know, as we're sharing videos, you know, each day. But in thinking about how God has blessed me, you know, and just how wonderful it is to have the time, to have the, oh, it's not expensive camera, but, you know, the camera and the computer, you know, and internet and, you know, the free resources that I can help inspire others to do ministry. I'm just excited that all my life, this is what I've always wanted to do, and I feel like I've entered into that place that God would bring to me for rest. And even as a blast of wind goes by, it's the Spirit. <laughs> <Woo>! <laughs> but even in that, you know, I rejoice in His timing. Have you ever gone into a store? Let me ask you this personally. Come on now, let's be honest for a minute. You know, it's you and I. You know, nobody's watching. You know, you're watching this video, and you can figure this one out for yourself, but have you ever gone into a store, you know, and you kind of, you only had a certain amount of money in your pocket, you know, but you didn't remember how much, you know, so you, you went and saw something you really wanted, but you didn't know how much money you had, so you kind of like added this and grabbed that and took this and took that, you know, and then you went up to the counter and you weren't quite sure how much you had, and then when they rang it up, including all that extra tax that was hidden that you didn't know about, it came out to the exact amount that you had in your pocket. Wasn't that cool? Do you think that was the Lord? Or do you think that was just coincidence? Hmm. Good question. Have you ever gone somewhere with friends, you know, where you were kind of like, you know, driving along, you know, and in the Jesus movement we used to call this a certain word, but I'll tell you in a minute. But you'll get it in a minute. But, you know, you're driving along and you're going over to this place, you know, and you're just getting ready to pull in the parking lot, and you see that it's a gigantic parking lot. And you don't want to park, like, miles and miles away from the entrance, but you want to park near the entrance. So you kind of went, boy, Lord, it should be nice if, you know, you just gave me a parking spot nearby. And sure enough, as you drove to that first row, and you went all the way towards the front, bingo, there was a spot. So you pulled in, <laughs> you know, and you were like, oh, thank you, God, thank you, thank you, thank you. Because he didn't want to carry all those groceries, you know, all the way out to the end of the parking lot. And it was packed because you were in one of those big cities. Because I grew up in Southern Cal, so <laughs> you know what those parking lots are like. Do you think that was coincidence? Good question. Or is it kismet, as some people say? Or a coinkinink? 
Hmm. My wife, God bless her, has been amazed when we go shopping sometimes because I always have a spot. I just pour right into it. I just trust the Lord that, you know, hey, cool, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. Now, before I go, she realizes that, you know, I've prayed about and thought about and talked to God about what I wanted to do that day, so everything as I went along the way just seemed to fall into place. Even when it was like, oh, well, you know, this street might be blocked off, we turn right, turn left, and then suddenly we're looking at something that we were looking for a long time ago, and I go, boy, look at that, the Lord just revealed it to us, you know, it's cool, this is exciting, you know, something's going to, you know, make this work together, you know, it's all going to happen. Because, you see, all things work together for good to those that love the Lord and are called according to His purpose. And some people don't take that too serious. I do. I always have. And I always will. So maybe you don't. <laughs> and maybe you're missing out on something. But for those of you that do, for each one of you that possibly have had God you know, do something very special, but... It wasn't just in those big miracles, you know, that you had where you went, ooh, the doctor said I was going to die and I lived, whoa. Like me, not living past 30, I was told, and yet I did. But I didn't treat that as such a big deal, although I thank God for it. Or like when you find yourself driving, you know, with your mother in the car, and you're in the car, you know, and you... You're on a Southern California freeway, you know, and you're hydroplaning and you're sliding over to the side and it looks like you're going to hit the embankment, you know, and flip over the bridge, you know, and go down into the freeway gully where there's another freeway underneath and you're going to die, <laughs> you know, and then suddenly the car shifts sideways horizontally as you're doing 60 in one direction and you can go sideways, which is physically impossible, and your mother looks at you and you look at your mother and you go, with your mouth hanging open and you go, whoa, that was an angel. Because you see, we were on a journey, both of us, to try to rescue my baby sister. Now, those things would be like, whoa, you know, you'd be all excited about, right? No, I took those for granted. You know, I kind of expected the big things. It's the little things I get a kick out of. It's the little tickle me's, you know. It's those things that just tickle your fancy, you know, that kind of... <laughs> get you, you know, right there, you just, <laughs> God, you just can't take it anymore, because it's just too good. Those are the things that I think about. Those are the things that I enjoy about Jesus. That's what makes my life complete, because all the big things, ah, they're a piece of cake, you know, I, I can deal with stresses, I can deal with hurricanes and earthquakes and tornadoes and floods and 9-11s and all the other junk that people look at as catastrophes to me are like, ah, no biggie. I've expected that all my life. But it's the little tickle me things, the little goofy things, you know, that you just go, ooh, isn't that neat? <laughs> Those are the things that we should be thankful for. All the big things are important, but the little things are what God demonstrates His love towards us, gives us that personal relationship that no one else can ever touch, no one else can take away from you, and no one else can ever lie to you about, because you know, you know it, you've been tickled, you know that it was just so good that you just had to give thanks to God, because you knew, only He knew what you wanted at the time. Only He knew and could arrange the circumstances to make it fit perfectly in your life. Only the living God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the Father of our Lord Jesus, could actually do all these things for you and make it so good that you were just, ooh. When thou hast eaten and art full, thou shalt bless the Lord thy God for the good land which he has given thee. Beware that you forget not the Lord your God. One of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God. And he fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answered and said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? They are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger. Every creature of God is good, and nothing to be refused, if it be received with thanksgiving. For it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. He that eateth, eateth to the Lord. For he giveth God thanks. 
the blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich, and he adds no sorrow with it. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and with tender mercies. You know, I think about that. And people sometimes get the wrong impression, maybe, about me that somehow I was some kind of like super saint, you know, and not a typical sinner. <laughs> Boy, if you got me wrong. <laughs> Man, I was like everyone else, and I still am. Given five minutes alone with half a chance, I'll go out and sin. <laughs> Ooh. But you know, gradually as I've gotten older, maybe you have too, I don't dive into some of those stupid things that maybe I tried when I was younger, that I thought, well, you know, God will forgive me, so I'll go try it and then. God forgave you, but the consequences really messed you up <laughs> big time. And you didn't like it because, you know, it's kind of like you had to do things the hard way. Like maybe you had to go the long way around, kind of like the children of Israel in the desert, you know, when they could have went straight to the land. They could have marched right in, but instead they said, oh no, we can't beat those giants. So they went around the desert. Of course, patriots couldn't beat the giants either. <laughs> Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> oh, well. But the point being is that when we recognize that we have a living God and we are dealing with someone who is very, very intimately involved with every part of our life, it's like you really don't want to disappoint him anymore. You kind of get to a place where you really don't want to sin like you used to. You don't want to suffer the consequences of the stupid stuff that you did, whatever it may have been, whether divorces or children or whatever dumb thing you did. And you know, you kind of figured you got away with it, but you know, you really haven't. You know, you get to a place older in life where you go, you know what? I don't want to do that anymore. And you know what God says? I forgive you. He really does. He'll take you from where you are today and he'll say, look, you're not a loser, you're loved. So you can put a big L on your forehead and say, I, I, I am loved by him. You got that? You ready for those three? I am loved by him. Because you were a loser. <laughs> but you turned it into being loved. There you go. God has forgiven you. And you know, the more that you get this love idea in your head and get rid of the loser part, the more you're going to discover that God can take what was meant for evil and turn it to good. And you'll begin to kind of be like me, where you go, you know what, Lord? I don't want to move in that house or apartment till I pray every step of the way and I make darn well sure it's exactly what you want me to do. Matter of fact, God, I'm not getting out of bed until you tell me exactly what you want me to do. Because you know what? I'm kind of getting tired of doing the stupid thing. I think I want to start doing the smart thing. Maybe it's time you started directing me like you said you would and I started listening like I promised I would a long time ago. Maybe, God, you could even speak a little louder. I could listen a little closer. I could hear your voice. Because, you know, I know that Jesus wants to take you home to be with him. I know there ain't much time left, and there's lots of things that you could get away with, you think, and you could go out and try and do, and find out that you don't want to do it because it turns into doo-doo. But if you really want to be tickled pink, if you really want God to go and just make it so good you just can't stand it, but you just feel like a puppy laying on your back while, <laughs> or a cat purring for all you women. But if you really want to enjoy the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living, God wants to bless you. He wants you to know that He loves you so much so that you can not only be forgiven, but you can move forward into just a place like where I'm at, enjoying how good it is of God.
and giving thanks for what he's done. Because believe me, I have blown it. I used to say that I was the biggest loser in life because everything I tried, it seemed like I lost. Now, you know, it's a matter of perspective because some people said, well, no, you've actually gained. I went, well, you know, that's not the way I felt. But, you know, for them, they thought I gained, but I felt like I really lost because I always wanted to be at one job for the rest of my life. I always wanted to do one thing for the rest of my life. I always wanted to have one life, you know, one, you know, one or two children, you know, and what, what, what do they say? One life, two children, two cars, a dog, a cat, you know, and a house and a home and all that stuff. <laughs> and such as it is, God chose not to allow me those things, but chose to use those things that were removed from me that he might give to me himself in a personal, intimate way that I could share with you the reality of God's grace and mercy and his forgiveness that you could know him as being so real in your life that you're going to wake up someday and just lay in your bed and look up at the sky maybe the ceiling, <laughs> wherever you are and just say, oh, God, you're just so good. Thank you for just being you. God, I am just glad you're here. That's where I'm at today. I hope you get there. I hope today you choose to do that. Because that's what God wants to do to you. He wants to tickle you till you can't stand. And then remember, give thanks. <laughs>